Okay, I'm here in GeoGebra. This is version 4.0 dot something something. So all the version 4.0 of GeoGebra are basically about the same. The way that they work, I'm going to show you how to do dot plots and box plots a couple of ways. But the first thing I have to do is enter a set of data and I just have a kind of a generic list of data that I'm going to use. I could do that in the input bar by typing whatever I want to name the list such as L equals and then use the set brackets and then just type the numbers like 4.5 comma 5.3 comma etc. That's one way to do it. I'm going to delete that though. I'm going to use the spreadsheet. So I'm going to go up to view and select to turn the spreadsheet view on. And I've already got the numbers typed in to save you time but that opens up a spreadsheet where you can type anything just like you would in Microsoft Excel. Okay. So I've filled in these numbers starting at 4.3 going down. I have 17 of them entered in, in column A. Okay. Once you have them in the spreadsheet, you actually have a few options you don't have in the other views. The icons change when you're in the spreadsheet. If I select all of those in column A just by clicking the mouse button and holding it down, just the regular left click mouse button, and I highlight those, I can click on this icon and just choose the, the first option there, the one variable analysis. And I can very quickly do different plots. I was working with these earlier. Let me turn off the second plot. When you go in by default, it just shows you one picture. It'll actually be the histogram, the first selection. And you have statistics over here. You have some options to do different types of tests and show different statistics. So there, very quickly, we already have the five number summary, the mean, and the standard deviation and all of those things. But right now I'm really concerned about the plots. We have the histogram. We can do a box plot. We can do a dot plot. Stem and leaf. Or when we talk about normal curves you can do a normal quantile plot to see whether or not the data is relatively normal. But we're concerned in this video with the dot plot and the box plot. So there's a really quick way to get a picture of the dot plot. You just click on the icon when you're in the spreadsheet view when you have the data selected and you can select dot plot and there you have it. There's not much you can do with a dot plot that's simply plotting the data points over their values on the x-axis and anytime you have a repeat, repeat you stack them up on the dot plot. Anytime you can change things in this kind of quick what I'd call the quick view window you can click on the little arrow and it'll give you whatever options there are there's not much for a dot plot I can turn the grid off and on if I want to see a grid and it has automatic dimensions where it uses the max and the mins to try to make sure everything fits in the window but you can turn that off and you can manually set that stuff if you want to okay? and then just click on the little arrow to take that away again with the box plot it's kind of the same thing there's not much you can do I, I right clicked in the other view we'll have a lot more options when we do that here you could you can actually copy that to the to the graphics view or to the clipboard if you want to to use or if you click on the little arrow again pretty much the same options I had with the dot plot I can change the viewing window okay so that's one way to get that and you can actually see two at one time is one option I can click to show a second plot and then I can see the dot plot in the box plot or a dot plot in the histogram or whatever I want in, in two windows at the same time. But I'm going to do this by commands because then we'll have a lot more options to do some fancier labeling and change colors and things like that. So I'm going to close this and I need to have this data entered into a list and there's a quick way to do that just select it as I have and again I just left clicked and drug down to select that and then right click and go down to where it says create and I can create a list and it'll pop it over here into the algebra view we now have the list of those points and you can see by those labels they're tied to the cells if I change those numbers like let's say I put a 7 in there where the 4.3 was it'll automatically change it in the list and if I've plotted it there as well Okay, but I'm gonna go back and put my 4.3 that I had there and now I'm going to hide the spreadsheet I can do that by going to view and toggling off and on that way or you can just click on the little X's to hide different things. If I wanted to hide the graph, which I don't, but I'll just show you. I can do that now I only have the algebra view. To get it back, I'm going to have to go up to view, turn the graphics back on. Okay. I'm going to start in the, the standard window. I'm going negative 10 to 10, but it, it depends on my data. 
But dot plot's very simple because there's not a lot of options or anything you can do to it. You just type the command dot plot. And on GeoGebra, when you start typing a command, when it starts matching something in the in the catalog, it'll it'll pop it up down here, and you can just hit enter, and it'll complete it for you. And the input for the dot plot is just your list of raw data, which is what I've called list one up there. Okay, so I'm going to type that list one, hit enter. There we go. It creates a list two, which now has the coordinates and then their frequency. And there's the dot plot. That doesn't look too good. I'm going to change the window and I'm going to do it manually. I'm going to right click, go to graphics, and my x-axis, our values will compute the minimum and the max in a minute. I believe if I look at the list 3.9 and 5.1 are the range here. So I'm going to set this to go from 3 to about five and a half in the x direction and just click enter and then close. And now that looks a lot better. Okay, so there's my dot plot. Okay. Actually I'm going to go back and make sure I can see the axis right now. So I'm going to go from negative one to five and a half and then maybe shorten that later. But so there's my dot plot and I can see the y direction. I did that because when I do the box plot we're going to have some commands based on that. Okay. I'm going to put a box plot above it. I want some more room. I'm going to click on this tool to, if I hold down the mouse button, I can drag the window. So that's a quick way to be able to see up above this. Now I'm going to do the box plot. So the command for that is box plot. There is an option where you can do what's called the Y offset, Y scale, and then the five number summary, but most of the time you're going to be working off of the raw data. So the input, you have to tell it the Y offset. Now what that is, is where the center of the box plot vertically is going to be in the Y direction. Okay? So maybe I'm going to put it up at about 10. And then the Y scale is the distance. The, the actual box plot will be twice whatever the Y scale is. It's the distance from the middle to the top and the bottom. I'm going to set that to 1. And then the raw data is where our list was, which was list 1. And there's our box plot. So the, the Y offset means that the middle of this is at 10. And my Y scale was 1. That means it goes up 1 and down 1. And so there's the box plot. Now I'm going to move it a little more to the center. Let's zoom in just with the, the quick zoom in command. And maybe drag it one more time. So there's the dot plot and the box plot together. One thing we can do very quickly is change colors now if we want to. Just right click, go down to Object Properties, and you can pick any color that you want for your box plot. Same thing with the dot plot. Just click on one of the points, go down to Object Properties, and I can make it any color that I want. Let's make it something crazy, purple. Okay. So there's my dot plot and my box plot. Okay, what's the advantage of doing it in this window as opposed to the quick view? Well, I can add other things. Like I'm going to add the label for the five labels for the five number summaries here. Okay, so I'm going to go down to the input bar. If I want to type text, I need to put it in quotes. So I'm going to use the the double quotes. I'm going to do the min first. So I'm just going to type min equals and in the quotes. So that would appear exactly what's in between the quotes on the screen. Minimum equals the min equals. But I'm going to append to that with a plus mark. So I'm going to hit the plus sign to append to that. And now type the command to generate the minimum, which is just min. Okay. I do the min of whatever my list of data is, which is list 1. Okay. So there we have, in quotes, min equals. It'll display that. And then it's going to append to it. I do the plus to append to it the minimum of the list. So I'm going to hit Enter. And there you have, see, it computed the minimum. And we have min equals. And it put the minimum of the list. And then I can drag that up here and kind of line it up with where the min is. Okay, let's do the max. So in quotes, max equals, in quotes, plus, the command is max of list1 is what we've called the list. I'm going to rename the list. I don't like typing list1. I'm going to go up and right click and go to rename and just call it capital L now, in quotes, let's do the median next. I'm going to abbreviate MED equals, in quotes, plus the command is median. Median of capital L, now that I've renamed the list. And you'll see it, it updated here, even though I changed the name, it still has the correct values there. 
So I'm going to line that up kind of under the middle there. And I'm going to add Q1 and Q3, the quartiles. So let's do Q. If you do an underscore, it'll do a subscript. Let's do Q underscore 1 equals plus the command is very simple, just Q1 of the list. And you'll see the underscore 1 did a subscript 1. So there's Q1 and finally Q3. So Q underscore 3 equals plus the command is Q3 of L. And there we go. We've got a box plot with the five number summary. Okay. The very last thing I want to show you in this video is how to cut and paste that into another document like say Microsoft Word. I'm going to show you two ways to do that on a, on a Windows PC. One way, and this will work on a Mac too, make sure you have the pointer tool selected, click your mouse button, the left click, hold it down, and then drag and put a box around whatever you want to show up. Maybe I want the numbers also. And then let go, and that selects everything. And then go up to edit, and we're going to do graphics view to clipboard. It's going to copy what's in the box to the, the clipboard so that we can paste it into other programs. Okay. So I'm going to open up Microsoft Word here and just right click and paste or you can do control V or use the icons and it'll paste it in. Okay. Now one thing it does is it makes it very big. It fills the page when you do that. You can resize it but it's going to make it a little blurry if you do that. If you want it smaller, I'll show you one more way to do it. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my screen. On the keyboard there should be a button that says print screen. It's over above the insert home, page up, page down, all of that. Up at the top there's one that says PRTSCR on my keyboard, print screen. I'm going to hit that button. That copies the entire screen. And then I'm going to go over and open up Microsoft Paint, which on the newest versions of Windows I can just type paint in the run command. And let me resize it so you can see it in the video here. I've got paint. And then I'm going to paste. I'm just going to well, hit the paste button and it will paste the entire screen which I know is bigger than you can see on the window right now. So let me move it around a little bit. And that pastes the entire screen and it's much smaller, much clearer than it was the other way. And I'm going to go get the selection tool which is over here. I can't fit this all in the screen on the video unfortunately. But I'm going to select the same way I did in GeoGebra, but I'm going to select. And then I can use the cut and paste tools. So I cut, and I'm going to close that. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to go back to Microsoft Word and paste that in. And it's just a lot more crisp and clear that way. So you can do print screen and paste it into Microsoft Paint, the generic paint program that comes with Microsoft Windows or any other program you want and then you can trim it in there and select it and paste it into something else. So that is the dot product and the, not the dot product, sorry, the dot plot and the box plot with labels.